Hi, my name's Ant from um, Auckland, New Zealand, and today I'm going to show you a customised car GPS. So it started off as a pretty basic um, 5 inch 800 by 480 resolution um, car GPS. It came with iGo Primo, which is just booting up into now. And the thing about iGo Primo is it's highly customisable, it's a cool program. And um, what you can do with it is um, unlike most other car GPS programs out there is that you can underlay your own aerial um, data underneath the vector roads so this is a data set that I composited a couple of years ago so I went to the local government and um, website and downloaded um, like three or four years worth of um, aerial surveys every summer they'll do an aerial survey so once you have that data and you arrange it in chronological order then you can um, make all the data sets the same color balance and take out the seams between them between the um, individual photographs if they're evident and take out the clouds and anything that kind of doesn't look right and end up with a composite data set which is what this is so this has a resolution of like um, 0.85 meters or 85 centimeters per pixel that's about three feet per pixel so if an object is as big as three feet then it occupies one pixel in the original data set and um, at that resolution it's kind of really useful for navigating around car parks and shopping malls and finding you know secret entrances and other cool you know cool things you know getting your car between buildings and, and stuff like that because it just provides you so much more intelligence that you don't see so this um, data set here is about 120 tiles and each of those tiles um, is 16,000 pixels by 16,000 pixels and that um, gives me a, a area of 150 kilometers or times 150 kilometers so 150 kilometers square that's like about 90 miles by 90 miles and um, it's given me good service but the obvious limitation of that is once you get outside the area of coverage uh, then the data set runs out so you can start to see the dark, you know that's one corner of the data set there so you know you could have an app on your iPhone or your smartphone which continually downloading data from Google or Bing but that's not going to help you um, you know when you get into more rural areas and they don't have cell phone coverage so you know you might be there and you've got no cell phone coverage and now in this data set you've got no um, aerial coverage either so what I've done recently is make a new data set um, again from government data and we'll just load that in and um, so now you know now we've got the whole of the country covered it's not going to be as you know good a resolution as that data set you I've just shown you this one here is loading up now is um, 4.5 meters per pixel so it's a fifth of the resolution but it's still a pretty big data set it's like over 300,000 pixels high so if you were to print that out um, if you were to print that out uh, at like 300 dpi you'd end, end up um, with a single image which is like 27 meters tall so that's I don't know it's, um, 75 feet tall so this one here is made up of about um, 3,000 images. Let's get to the top of the North Island. So, you know, now, now it covers the entire country, so we can go touring around on holiday and stuff like that and go to the tourist points and um, check out the local beaches and things like that. And like I said, this device is a WinCE, so it's a pretty primitive device compared to Android. And this data set is. 18,000 is like about 18 gigs and comprises about um, 3,000 tiles and each of those tiles is again 
3000 pixels by 3000 pixels which is basically a fifth of um, my high resolution Auckland one so you know obviously it's not as detailed but now we've got the whole country covered and we can check out some cool beaches and and um, figure out how to get there and what roads to take so this is running off um, a um, 18 sorry this is running off a um, 32 gig micro SD card and the SD card itself is pretty old it's like um, class 4 which is the more modern cards are probably like four or five times faster than this um, but you know the performance of it is not too shabby I think um, if you were to get a, like a really modern SD card and put this program onto an Android um, device like an Android phone or an Android tablet which you can do and um, run it off that, run the whole data set off that your performance would be much better than what I'm demonstrating here but as you can see it's still not too shabby you know you can go to cool places see where all the petrol comes into the country blah 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 um, so and now we've got um, the whole country covered so we can go like down to the volcanic areas and see where things are where the geysers are like bubbling out of the ground and um, you know where there's hot water springs that place there that was a, um, a volcanic eruption about 150 years ago the whole mountain exploded and then put that big split down there this whole area is a like a volcanic black plateau and this lake here was formed um, 1800 years ago and uh, the explosion was so big that the debris was supported by the Romans so you know with a like a car, standard car GPS you kind of can't see all these details which um, which you can get with the aerial underlays you just find another mountain or something so that one's got like a cool um, crater lake in it there's quite a few mountains around this area the one down there so this is at the moment it runs pretty well in 3 in 2d but um, this program is capable of displaying this imagery in 3D but to be honest it doesn't work very well you know if you have one tile or two tiles then it's not a problem but when you get like hundreds of tiles the, the distance you're viewing, viewing in the background once you tilt um, tilt it so the horizon is visible is so vast that it, it can't really cope you need a, like a proper computer to do that you know a desktop computer or something um, so I ported this same data set out to like uh, flight sim Microsoft flight sim or um, NASA whirlwind which is like a build it yourself Google program and if I want to view stuff or fly stuff around or animate um, in 3d then um, you know then I would use those programs but this car GPS really is not powerful enough to um, display like the vast amount of data um, which is contained in this data set in three dimensions so best left is a 2D so how do you achieve this? well what you need to do is you need to download a program called um, NNG Raster NNG so that's like Nelly Nelly Gladys um, space Raster and so like natively it's a Russian language program but it does have an English language um, option interface and what that will do that will take your imagery um, and convert it into the format which this car GPS uses because it's got its own native little format that um, it uses you just can't feed it JPEGs or bitmaps or TIFFs or anything and expect it to work um, unlike Gar you know, Garmin you can do that but Garmin's kind of limited you can only have it like a um, a very small amount of data in there with this you know I've got the whole country covered that's just showing you how powerful this car GPS um, program is it will take an entire national data set so you download um, NNG raster and the first thing you've got to do if you're um, English speaking and you've got a, like an English speaking computer you will find that your regional settings are set up 
so that the decimal point um, in numbers is represented by a full stop and the, the, the digit grouping is represented by a comma. Because this program is written um, um, by Europeans, then you need to change the regional settings so that the decimal point is represented by a comma and the numbers number grouping is represented by a decimal point. And um, once you've done that, then the program will run correctly. If you don't do that, you'll end up with um, compile errors and the program won't and the program won't work. So the other thing I found about that out about this through experience is that um, my previous data set was 120 tiles and I was just gonna um, um, process this data in the same way as I'd done a couple of years ago. So I took my 3,000, I took my um, New Zealand data set and I cut it up into 3,000 tiles, each of them which were one eighth of a degree, and um, compiled them with an, NN, with an NNG raster program and put all those 3,000 files onto the SD card and then plug, you know, plugged it in and fired up um, iGo Primo. And what I found is only like the top 10% um, of the country was visible for me. So I counted the tiles and counted where it stopped, and it stopped at 256. So there's an obvious file limitation on this where it can't have more than 256 um, images in that directory. Beyond that, anything beyond that, you know, it can sit in the directory, but it won't be visible to the program. The program won't in, um, interpret that extra data. So what you've got to do with NNG Raster, what I had to do is go back and recompile, um, recompile that uh, those individual frames and put them into groups of 16. So one eighth degree um, in a four by four matrix equals 16 tiles equals half a degree. So now the country is is made up of um, half degree sets, yeah. And NNG allows you to specify 16 tiles and turn them into one one bigger image file. So now the country, instead of being in th in 3,000 pieces, is now in just over 200 pieces. So that fits within the limit of Rust NNG, and that's how I got over that um, limitation. So there's a couple of things to note there. Also, um, you know, when you when you download the NNG program and fire up on your PC, what you're going to be faced with is putting all the corner the coordinates of those tiles into that program. So that would be a mission if you had, like I did, um, 3,000 tiles to process and specify the bounds of the, the, the matrix and stuff like that. You know, you'd be there for a while. And um, so what I did is I just wrote a little script which um, went through the list of the files and then worked out the corner coordinates and then wrote that directly into the um, INI file which the program itself creates. When, what I'm saying is that when you manually input the coordinates and the names of the files that you want to process, if you would do that manually, it creates a little text file and um, with all that information in it. So that would be a mission to do if you had like 3,000 um, tiles to do. So what I did is wrote a little program that read the directory, looked at all the files, worked out their coordinates, and created the text file. And then from there, once I had that text file already pre-created, then run the program. And when you run the program, all the fields that you have to fill in manually are already filled in for you. And all you have to do is press the, um, you know, a couple of um, buttons on the interface, and it will compile um, and compile the the image file that f fits within the car GPS. So you can write a little script program, and then get something like um, auto hotkey and a macro recorder, so you can record the mouse um, positions, and that's how I automated the whole thing. So 
to compile 3,000 tiles and um, turn them into like 200 plus sets, um, it would take a you know a long, long time to do manually, and wouldn't be, really be feasible. Um, you know, you'd be there for a, for too long. So I automated the whole process with just a script file and like I said auto hotkey and a macro recorder and then once you've got those things in place you know the, the compile took like two days machine time and I split it up over four five machines so it took like half a day half a day to compile the data set so you can do some pretty cool things with it you can customize you know you could customize that data a little bit more so instead of having you know, being set up for a car GPS, you go to the government, get some topo data, and that would give you information about, you know, the spot heights and the contour lines around here. And um, you could create a GPS um, which would be more suited for hikers and trampers. Yeah, so it would have all the local place names and the place of the, the um, government huts where, can, where trampers can um, stay, and we'll have the name of that little cove there. And it'll tell you that there's rocks around there, and it'll give you the um, vertical and horizontal lines of, you know, magnetic, um, you know, the, ma the latitude, longitude, but um, you know, compass in terms of magnetic compass bearings rather than true um, true north bearings. So you can do all those sorts of things. So you can see that this is kind of interesting, and that's what fascinates me is how much information you can put onto such a primitive device and um, run around the country and find all sorts of interesting places like that place there is like make some of the best aluminium in the world it's like 99.5 percent pure and uh, so that's my customized car gps and like i said um, because i've got 120 files in one directory one folder and um, just over 200 in my national folder then I need a couple of folders so I just wrote a little Mort script um, so when I exit out of the program uh, and then go back and press that button which would normally start up the GPS now I've got an additional icon here which swaps the folders around and when my GPS starts up next it will have um, swapped the folder names around and now it'll go back into my default high res Auckland and I can run around the city and, and see things in high detail so it's kind of a quick way of swapping out that data so I hope you got something out of that and if you want to send me some comments um, please fill in the comment space below this video see you